Hey, I want to give you a little overview of how the popovers are working in our WebDirect calendar and how to edit them. Um, so for a little review, in, this is our pro calendar that runs in the desktop. And when we click on an event, we see that event in a new window. Now this is just a, a FileMaker layout and you can edit it and you probably already have if you're already using our calendar. Um, and the neat thing is, is that there's only one of those layouts and we use it no matter what view we're on here. So if I switch to the WebDirect layout, you'll see things work uh, a little bit differently. So here's the same thing in WebDirect. And again, we're looking at this in Pro so we can edit layouts. These little white lines don't show up when you look at this in a browser. Um, and if I click on one of these events here, it comes up in a little popover, uh, which is cool. This is also just a FileMaker layout, also easy to edit. But there are a couple of tricks to editing it, and I want to show you those. And I also want to remind you that this exists on each of the different layouts in the WebDirect calendar. So there's one of these popovers on the month view and the schedule view. So when you edit it in one place, you kind of want to copy it and put it uh, on all the other layouts as well. And I'll show you a trick for doing that here. So how do we kind of work with this thing? So let's drop into layout mode. The first thing is how do you find it? And it's actually right here. So it's just to the left of this uh, date. And it's the object itself is locked. But if you double click on it, the objects in the popover, well, some of them are locked, um, aren't locked. And you can edit this just like any other FileMaker layout. So that's the first trick is where do you find it? The only other thing to remember about that is that it's in a slightly different place in the Gantt view with no side menu where it's right here. And then on um, regular layouts where there's no side menu, like the simple version of the, or the weak view without a side menu, um, it's right here. So that's where it is. Let's go back to our uh, weak view. And there's one other, well, a couple other tricks about working with it. So the first is that there's one of these per source. So this is obviously the sample events. If I click on here, this is a table called sample events, and you'll follow our instructions and repoint this at your own uh, table. Um, but you may have multiple sources, and if you do, you find those by double clicking in this background here, kind of right here, and you'll see that this is a slide control, and there are additional frames for each source. So our instructions about creating new sources show you how to kind of make new ones of these. You can just click the plus and then you copy and paste this information over. It's all pretty cool. And all this stuff like this button and these guys down here, these are all shared um, between the sources. So you can just kind of copy this whole thing and paste it onto your new source, which is uh, no big deal. And you also, you'll notice this is a slide control also. Our little cancel and confirm things, right, are, are different slide controls. So that's basically what's going on with this thing, is just to remember that there's multiple slide panels, one for each source, and then it exists on multiple layouts. So how do you move it from layout to layout? So let's say we made a change here. I like I repurpose this blank tab, you know, after unlocking it. <laughs> Arrange, unlock. I repurpose this blank tab, and now I want to move this everywhere else. So um, the only thing to remember is where it is and that its name is important. So what we want to do is copy it. So I'm just going to kind of select it and hit copy. And then over in position, I'm just going to remember where it is. So it's at 4.15.34. So now I'm going to go to the next layout that also has a sidebar and find the one that's here. And the first thing, this is the most important thing, is to delete the one that's already here. Unlock and delete. Okay, once you've done that, you can paste in the new one and then put it where you want. 4.13, tab 34. And I like to lock it again. Arrange. Arrange, right, lock. I like to lock it again after I've done that so that it's easy, shows up a little bit brighter and it's hard to nudge it out of the way. I would then kind of come back and do the, um, the no sidebar layouts. And it's the same popover, it's just in a different spot, 8234. I would delete this and paste it in. So um, that's the basics of how to work with this thing. Uh, the popovers are pretty cool. You can also move them somewhere else, right? If you don't like um, you know, the fact that its little arrow kind of points over at weak. You can put it somewhere else, and the object's styled, so you can change the style if you want. But it's um, it's pretty straightforward. Oh, there is one other thing that I should probably show you, um, as you're uh, as you're playing around here. Whoop. So obviously we know how to repoint this field at a table in our own, um, or at a field in our own table. But this uh, color up here, this green, um, if you need to get at that thing, there's actually a mask image on top of it. And if I just drag that mask image out of the way, you can see what's going on here, right? There's this kind of masking image. And then this uh, field back here is actually um, not something you need to mess with. It's a field over in cal calendar interface containers. So as you make new sources, you don't need to, um, I'll just put that back by using undo. You don't need to mess with this. You also don't need to mess with these little red guys here. You're really just kind of worrying about the, uh, the data, the source name, um, 
you don't need to worry about. Just kind of the fields. What's your title? What's your description? What are your dates? And uh, that's about it. And again, uh, you don't need to worry about these scripts. Those are all shared across all the sources. So uh, I hope that helps. Thanks.